Hey, this is Alpha. What are reasoning models and why should million dollar brands care about them? Today, I will dive deeper into some of the latest announcements by OpenAI. I'll also briefly touch on Anthropic and conclude with my thoughts on where reasoning models are going for agentic workflows. Let's look at the latest announcement by OpenAI first. Their 12 days of announcements are something that they released last week and day one they made an announcement to release a updated O1 model and the GPT um, Pro subscription which allows you to unlock access to that and I'll show you what that looks like. The second announcement they did uh, which was uh, just two days ago on, or rather yesterday on Friday was um, the reinforcement learning that they're introducing into their platform but let's dive into that so looking at the latest announcement for ChatGPT pro we see that they're introducing a new plan or new tier for 200 dollars a month that allows any user of ChatGPT to access their latest o1 model and i'll show you what that looks like as well and beyond that if i scroll down just to show you um, the potential of this new model which i can call O1 full mode, uh, whereas before we had O1 preview. And for context, for those who have been living under the rock, um, two months ago roughly, OpenAI released the preview model, and it has been available for uh, users of ChatGPT for quite some time. But now today's release, or a couple of days ago, was the release of the O1 or O1 full model. In this case, if we look at the difference between preview 01 and the pro mode we see that the preview model which was available back in september is underperforming in comparison to the other two models and i'll show you what the difference between 01 and pro mode is but in a nutshell if you're paying for the ChatGPT pro account you can access the pro mode model and that gives you additional reasoning so these models become better at coding um, including uh, this benchmark called Code Forces, if they get better at math, and of course, they get better at uh, science. These are just three uh, benchmarks that they share, and there are many more that the community is currently testing, as well as uh, what people are reporting. And uh, beyond that, you know, the the interesting part of this model is that it is better at reasoning, and I'll explain what that is and how OpenAI did reasoning um, that uh, at least their flavor of reasoning if we look at kind of what's coming up next um, we see that there will be a series of announcements for the 12 days of Christmas or <laughs> in this case 12 days of OpenAI and um, the second announcement they made which is related is how companies brands can push their performance so next level if you uh, take the, um, the the new um, or i'd say relatively new strategy of reinforcement learning which is a technique that OpenAI has used internally um, and you make that technique available to the public this is what you're looking at it's a way for any brand to leverage their uh, fine-tuned process and the difference is before they had supervised learning, now they have reinforcement learning, and it's just a, a much better technique for training AI models or uh, large language models to understand the data you're looking at and to predict the next, um, pro the next token. So in this case, they have an application form and this reinforcement learning program is able um, to take in your application. If you're a brand, specify you know, what you do, whether you're a startup or an enterprise, specify what you want to use it for, and then you can get access uh, early next year. So this is quite unique. And the, the best part about this reinforcement learning is that it allows a brand to fine tune a model and outperform the O1 model with as little as 10 examples. So if you're a brand and you have unique data, private data, that you have been collecting either about how you run your business, or how you respond to customers, or any other uh, type of data set that is 
um, valuable to you, you can use the reinforcement learning uh, technique to fine tune an O1 mini model, for example, and then have that model outperform the O1 model. And um, now I want to dive deeper into kind of sort of the, the back end of OpenAI, and you know they were public enough to share some information, and I'll fill in the gaps on what they're doing so you can better understand. So um, they call these models reasoning uh, models, and there is a reason for that is because the reasoning is coming through a uh, a series of uh, prompt engineering and um, a series of engineering techniques that the community has defined uh, as chain of thought. So this idea was first introduced back in 2022. Here we go. And this technique um, has uh, made its way into any um, software developer who began to use language models, started to apply some of these uh, more advanced techniques. Chain of thought is nothing more than at the kind of the prompt of asking the agent to think step by step. And as the model thinks step by step, the model uh, takes um, longer to respond. And as it takes longer to respond, it comes up with a better answer. So the premise of this paper back in 2022 was that if you ask an expert, whether it's a human or an agent, to think step by step, to explain their thoughts, then you would get a better uh, response, which is true. The best teachers today are those who can explain what they do, how they do it step by step. And beyond that, the, the technique uh, in the case of OpenAI has been applied to create these O1 models. So if we scroll down, we're essentially looking at the sort of the, the difference between a GPT-4 model, which is a model that responds uh, very intuitively, very quickly, and the O1 model, which is the reasoning model that takes time to respond, thinks through uh, step by step. And you can see the difference between the two. One is slow, uh, rather one is fast, one is slow, and, and, and this is reflection of the performance as shown in these accuracy benchmarks. On, a, on the top here, we have accuracy, so on GPT-4 O model, is less accurate because it's quick to respond, doesn't have time to think, O1 model is the opposite. So if we scroll down, we're gonna see that they actually talk about chain of thought. So they are using a technique perhaps um, similar to the one outlined in the research paper by Google. And this is something that you know has, has been adapted by not just developers, but researchers in this case they break down the chain of thought as how you would essentially ask a human to think a long time before responding to a difficult question this is a great analogy and of course you can apply this to any context coding math um, science health science and even communications here so if i scroll down i'm just going to show you um, something that is quite unique and that is um, that the decision that OpenAI has made for this approach is to hide the chain of thought. So they talk about this here. So they believe, OpenAI, that the hidden value is, is there's an opportunity in hiding that value. So essentially assuming that there are um, lots of factors at play, they weighed it all the different um, parameters and all the different benefits to showing the chain of thought, showing step-by-step -step thinking. And then they decided that um, to be competitive, to uh, improve the user experience of not being overwhelmed with information. And of course, to um, simplify the, the trace or the monitoring, they decided not, not to show the raw chain of thought. So when a user is asking O1 model, whether it's preview or O1, to think step by step, the user only sees a very quick wine line descriptions of that key step, and the user does not see the inner parts of that chain of thought. And I'll show you uh, that there are ways to overcome this. 
of course, but this is a um, strategic, uh, strategic decision that OpenAI has made when releasing these reasoning models. So, um, sort of why are we talking about these O1 models? Like, aren't they um, just trying to catch up to, for example, Anthropic's Sonnet 3.5 or, or other models in the space? Well, what's interesting here is that this model is getting really, really good to the point where uh, we have Twitter users like McKay reporting that it's it's better than they anticipated. And of course, you know, McKay um, and both myself have been using these models for a long time. So we can attest to kind of th these anticipations better than those who haven't. And in this case, McKay does a comparison of using four different uh, large language models and then figuring out uh, which model is the most likely to give him what he's expecting. And his test was as simple as, hey, I wanna take a screenshot um, of Coinbase, which is a crypto exchange. I wanna give that screenshot to a one model. He gave the, the prompt to create a, a React based application that looks exactly like the screenshot. And so this was the, the prompt, the image prompt and the text prompt. And you can see on the right here, here is a generated O1 model response. So if I scroll back to the left, again, on the left is what you see the original Coinbase um, application. And just as I scroll here, you're gonna see the newly O1 generated model. So this is a great example of how um, developers can really save themselves time. The last piece I'll mention here is that um, McKay has already figured out a workflow um, that works quite nicely for him. And that is if you take this sort of O1 model, whether it's O1 or O1 Pro, and you, um, you can use it for most of and the coding uh, workflows, you can use it for most tasks because it's really good at one shot prompting. And when you cannot, then you're simply falling back to cursor, um, you're falling back to uh, wind surf or something that is more focused on coding, but perhaps uses another model like Sonnet. So again, um, the workflow that seems to be at this moment in time, the best for coding is a one pro mode with um, a replacement of cursor or wind surf. And beyond that, the, the piece that I'll mention here is the documentation, which is quite useful to understand by OpenAI. They talk about the idea that you have uh, different models that are available uh, for access. Um, and I believe the documentation hasn't been fully updated here because we do expect at least three models, the O1 or rather four, O1 um, Preview, O1 Mini, O1 and O1 Pro. But nonetheless, I expect this to be updated shortly. But the most important part is if I scroll down, you're gonna see um, an important limitation that they describe and they give advice actually on how to prompt well. So in this case, the advice by OpenAI is to limit context in reg systems. And this is where if you are a brand and you have private data and you want to use a one model to give you the response you're expecting, you can use um, contextual reg to help you to overcome this problem. So if I look at the, the best implementation today, it's by Anthropic. So if you haven't seen this already, back in September, they released contextual retrieval that allows you to do this. And the last piece I'll mention here is where is this all going? The OpenAI released this reasoning model um, as an attempt to really solve intelligence. And I think Santiago says, well, that the cost of intelligence is going to zero. Uh, however, OpenAI being a private company, they are charging money for that, so that makes sense. At the same time, I think this, evolu this sort of reasoning capabilities of intelligence, um, cognifying aspects of these models will only improve. And I'm excited to see how brands can use them today. If you are a brand and you're looking to implement O1 models into your workflow, if you're looking to fine tune O1 mini models, um, so that they can outperform O1 performance, feel free to reach out to me and I would be happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with you. Thanks for your time.